No more Kickstarters, he famously said. Well... It was August 26, 2020, and I was getting the CR6 SE out of the box on a live stream. At the 1027 mark, I said, no more Kickstarters, legit. Not unless they pay me an ungodly amount of money, which I would disclose up front. Famous last words? I thought really hard on this, and I think I'm gonna have to modify that statement. The CR30 slash 3D print mail is a Kickstarter 3D printer, and Creality paid me zero dollars to produce content around the machine. I knew it was gonna be something that a lot of people would be interested in, and I wanted to see it for myself so I could answer questions based on personal experience, you know. That said, remember, this is a Kickstarter, and the machine I have is pre-production. All thoughts and opinions on it are based on my personal experience with the pre-production machine. Plus, Creality and Naomi Wu were not given a preview of this video. They're seeing it at the same time as you. With that out of the way, let's dive right in. Naomi's 3D print mill, also known as the Creality CR30, is a belt style 3D printer with a nozzle at a 45 degree angle to the bed instead of the typical 90 degrees. This means when printing some models where support was once needed before, none is needed now. This also means you can print models longer than the machine, thanks to the belt advancing continuously on the Z-axis. Yes. It's the Z-axis. Some people say, uh, I think that's the Y-axis. And I mean, I understand why you might think that, but it's not correct. Imagine X and Y as being parallel to the ground. Z then is the belt at a 45 degree angle trailing away from them. This requires a new way of slicing the model since the Z-axis is continually shifted per layer. Right now, Black Belt Cura and Creality Belt use a modified version of Cura 360, which sucks because it was last updated November 30th, 2018. What? There's been a lot of advancements in slicing in the last two years, and using this old version of Cura means belt slicing is missing out. However, recent tweets from Idea Maker have shown a preview of 45 degree slicing coming soon. <clears throat> no word yet from Simplify 3D. I can't even say that without cracking a smile. The machine itself is incredibly well built. There are no 3D printed parts on this thing. It's all aluminum extrusion and steel brackets holding things together. Like I could stand on this thing like it could easily take the full Joel. The outfeed rollers that you see here on the end aren't actually part of the base machine, and they're a $94 extra charge on Kickstarter. Mine are built well, but the rollers aren't level with each other, and that's why I hacked it with some cardboard and some tape. <laughs> I hope Creality can get the rollers level for backers. It's a well-built accessory for the machine, but you only need it if you plan on doing prints longer than the machine itself, or, if you don't have your own DIY homegrown outfeed solution. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna take off the outfeed rollers and just give us some more room on the bench here. Just a sec. I don't have a lot of room. I got a printer that makes things that take up a lot of room. Look at that car, just, just admire this cardboard. You know, at a young age, one of the earliest forms of hacking I did was with cardboard and tape, I, like I would build these massive fortresses for my GI Joes and I would use string and tape and cardboard and make doors and trap doors and it was amazing. And one year for Christmas, I remember in my stocking, I got just a bunch of masking tape. I would find all the cardboard I could, uh, I could get my hands on. So this, this means something. There we go. The motion system on the 3D print mill is CoreXY, and Island Moyer, who maintains the CoreXY.com website, can explain what that is and why it exists much better than I can. Creality's implementation of CoreXY uses motor mounting, which makes one of the motors have a pulley attached at the end of a much longer motor shaft. Uh, with everything tensioned properly, I feel like over time, this could introduce some deflection to the shaft, but, this is just a theory and I have no deflection at this time. 
The extrusion system is very familiar as the filament sensor, the extruder, the Bowden setup, and the hot end eh, are all borrowed from previous Creality machines. I know this because in usage, I had a clog in the nozzle and I <clears throat> borrowed the nozzle from my Ender 3 Pro. I do like that these heater blocks have two posts into the heat sink, keeping it steady and in place when doing a nozzle swap. Plus, with the way this is built, a spool of filament sits on the spool holder just behind the screen, feeding directly into the filament sensor and into the extruder. It keeps the whole thing compact, neat, and tidy, and I like it. I like it a lot. When you pair a Core XY motion system with a Bowden setup, typically you're able to achieve faster print speeds because the print head is lighter and less mass is favorable when moving quickly. However, the CR30 employs a slower print speed in the print profiles I was using. I don't know if this was a better safe than sorry sort of approach or if functionally these machines need to print slower. Whatever the reason, I very much want to fit a direct drive extrusion system on this machine down the line. Uh, I, I can imagine there being third party direct drive conversion kits available in the future. The belt is tensioned between two rollers and the roller in the back, right back here, is connected to a gearbox with a Z motor driving it. There are two metal plates under the belt top with one being heated and the other being a cool down zone. Both plates have adjustment knobs at the sides to raise the plates, though on my machine, they are both too high, even at their lowest adjustment point. I've heard this is fixed in newer pre-production machines, but again, this review is based on mine and so there you go. Unfortunately, having the two metal plates not being level with the end roller means a slight downhill is introduced. And this is what caused the issues on the first I-beam that I 3D printed. Eh. Moving the Y end stop to put a little bit more space between the nozzle and the belt helped to mitigate the glaring layer issue, as you can see in the second I-beam I printed. Wait a minute. <laughs> The second I-beam does have quite a bend in it though, and I believe it has to do with the belt, the end roller, and the outfeed all being out of level with each other. Look at that, that's a bend. It should look like this, but instead it looks like this. I don't have a newer pre-production machine to try this out on, so I can't confirm my theory. The belt material is super interesting, and it's nothing you're ever gonna see. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. Remember, what I have is a pre-production machine. This means that there can and will be changes to the machine that you see, hopefully for the better. Heck, there are changes to newer pre-production machines sent to other people. The pre-production belt is interesting, a bit furry and soft. Part adhesion is off the charts, crazy good, and once removed, the belt shows a ghost of the part it once held. There is a new belt and Oh look, here it is. I received this yesterday and didn't have time to fit it into the machine before filming. It's packed super well with foam all around it and foam inside the belt. The new belt feels like more what, what, what you would see on a treadmill, kinda. Uh, I'll get this on as soon as I can and get some tests going. Though I've heard from others that already have this belt and they say part adhesion isn't an issue and it's working well. Swapping in a new belt means I'll have to calibrate the Z-axis E-steps. To do that, it's surprisingly simple. You print a 100 millimeter long object. In my case, it's a vase mode print that I posted to Twitter and someone said, looks like a stick of butter. Then you measure the piece. Mine measured more than 102 millimeters in length. In fact, 102.26. You take that measurement and the current E-steps in the machine and then you put them into a calculation that spits out calibrated E-steps. Put that number, the calibrated E-steps back into the machine, reprint the piece and measure it. Once I did that, my 100 millimeter piece measured, no joke, 100.02. It's just two tenths from being perfect. Nice. The build volume is tricky to calculate. It's 200 millimeters on X, 
It's 170 millimeters on Y, and well, it's infinite on Z. The nozzle, it goes to 240C, and the belt heater will reach 100C. Oh my God, you talk so much. Just show us the print. <laughs> Prints from this machine are quite decent, actually. Sword of Omens, give me sight beyond sight. Thundercats, ho! Of course I printed a sword. One half of this sword is printed in, uh, let's see, what is this? This is printed solid beige number 500. And the other half is Atomic Filaments Dark Cherry. <laughs> I did have some failures, not material failures, but failures in the slice settings, inconsistent extrusion, and lots of stringing. That was with the Creality Belt Slicer. Carl from Knack3D has a terrific PLA profile for Black Belt Cura, and I switched to that to get these prints. I think that a sword is almost like the benchy of a belt printer. You can test the quality of the print and the ability to print long. Heck, even Angus was impressed with printing a sword. I'm not one to use the term killer app lightly, but yeah, for any kind of cosplay work, swords, staffs, armor, and the like, this machine was born to do it. I also ran some pieces for a rep box. It was uh, one right after the other. <laughs> and this is Matter Hacker series, the build series, Pink PLA. This would be sort of what a production scenario could look like and no doubt what many small batch manufacturers would use this for. This cube is a single perimeter print in PLA and watching it print is nothing short of hypnotic. Because of orientation, there isn't any bridging happening. It's all 45 degree overhangs that the machine can handle. It would be similar to printing this on a standard machine with one of the corners on the bed. <laughs> You saw the Oogie Boogies from the Halloween video, right? Those turned out great too when I used the right profile. A lot of people said, Joel, can it print PETG? Yes. Yes, it can. These Alexander Chappelle camera arm pieces are in Greengate 3D's PETG. I think it turned out decent. Uh, for these, I used the PLA profile. I upped the temp to 240C and I upped the bed, I mean, the belt <laughs> to 70C. Little stringing. A little stringing on some and some wisps, but that's easy enough to clean up. It looks like, looks like uh, on further inspection, there's a layer shift on this one here. I have no idea how that happened. Not all prints are meant for 45 degree printing, as I found out with the fix em, dude tie interceptor card print. Uh, I just had to kill the print because it looks, it looks terrible. Just awful. Gross. This wasn't the only print failure, though all print failures other than the tie interceptor print were because of bad or improper slicer settings. I did experience a weird hardware failure. The printer just stopped mid-print. Uh, here's the belt printer <laughs> that I was watching on my Wise cam. There was no activity. I thought maybe the camera froze. No, it stopped for some reason. Um, there's no stop there. The filament is there, it's in the sensor. It's going through, uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Something, something happened. Power cycling the printer didn't seem to bring up the logo either. I, I thought I had killed it. Somehow, I noticed the plug on the back of the screen wasn't fully seated. Seating it properly seemed to take care of things. And then that's when I printed this this I-beam right here, the display cable doesn't lock into place and it's pretty short. Uh, so if I could make a suggestion, <laughs> it would be to sturdy up that connection. Maybe make it some sort of locking connector or, or maybe make the cable slightly longer, something like that. Plus all of the rollers on the extrusion pieces got fur? <laughs> like lots and lots of fur. I, I don't know how or why exactly it happened, but once I cleaned it all off, it just, it hasn't come back, at least yet. So, uh, so should you back the CR30 on Kickstarter? <sighs> That's a complicated question, isn't it? It's really tough for me to be pragmatic about an answer that could make sense for everyone. My pre-production machine is incredibly well built and robust, but you know, so is my pre-production CR6 SE. This machine is not for everyone. 
It's a batch manufacturing workhorse, and it's a prop maker's dream. It's a platform for tinkering and playing around. Heck, <laughs> printing with this thing made me feel like I did when I got my first 3D printer back in 2014. At the time of filming, the Kickstarter is still open, and the price for this right here is $688 US. For the build quality and what you're getting, I think it's a terrific price. If Creality can mass produce and deliver at this quality level or better. I'm hoping all of the work up front is going to pay off. Creality is consulting with Carl, who you know created the White Knight belt printer. And they've also sent one off to Bill Steele, who in 2015 through Polar 3D created his own belt printer machine. Naomi has sent the machine not only to me, but also to Chuck Hellebuck, Angus at Maker's Muse, Uncle Jesse, and Matthew at Design Prototype Test. And we have all given lots of feedback, hoping to make what the backers receive be the best machine possible. Naomi also sent a machine to Filament Frenzy to specifically create tuned filament profiles that will be included with the machine when backers get it. And thankfully, Scott, the maintainer of Marlin, also got a CR30 so firmware could be updated and brought to a level that will take full advantage of the hardware platform. I know Scott already has implemented a new command that repeats chunks of G-code, which is perfect for tons of parts nonstop without bloating your G-code file size. Think of it like a while true do in code. <laughs> That's the thing that I think makes this different, getting outside help from the community. Creality's first Kickstarter for the CR6SE was, honestly, it's, it's still a bit of a debacle. I have no way of knowing if this Kickstarter will be different. I'm hoping it is, because if it truly is, and machines of this quality or better are delivered to thousands of backers around the world, there is going to be a lot of really happy people having a lot of fun at 45 degrees. There you go. That's what I think about this machine. That's what I think about what it's done. I'm excited to hear your thoughts. Did you back it? Are you not backing it? I, I'm curious. I'd love to hear what you thought. Well, listen, if you made it this far, you're awesome. I appreciate Naomi and Creality for sending this my way for review. I really wish them the best of luck in their Kickstarter and my fingers, my toes, everything is crossed. Just hoping that when all of this ends, mass production begins and Creality is able to get thousands of units out at this quality level or better. If that happens... I'm going to be so happy, and I know so many others will be. Well, good luck. I hope yours, if you ordered it, uh, I hope it comes to you and, and you love it. And uh, if there's any requests for other prints you want me to do with this, uh, this new belt, let me know in the comments or tag me on the socials. I'm at Joel Telling. <laughs> Listen, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. And from a safe distance, high five. Still a little wiggly. <laughs> I could probably glue this together, yo. Stiffen it up a little bit. Just a little bit. But anyway, it's a sword machine. It's just a sword machine. Ooh, ooh.